Welcome to Deep Dive Film School. I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Paltrow. And if you like what you see slash hear, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people what? Find good media. Mm -hmm. That's right. Find us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Those are our most popular platforms. All right. This week we're getting into that one scene from The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid. 1984. Yes. Um, you know, this is, if, if I could define a childhood <laughs> defining movie. Yes. Uh, it would be this movie. God, like, I was that's exactly what I've been thinking I, about. I was five, six years old when it came out, and I think I've watched it probably 50 times in my life, if, yeah. not, if not more. Same. The director, John G. Avlitson, do you know his filmography at he all? He directed Rocky. <laughs> well, yeah, he did the first Rocky. Yes. And then the fifth Rocky, which okay. is really weird. All right. Um, that's the one with Tommy Gunn, I think. Okay. Um, and then um, he did Karate Kid 1, obviously. Yeah. 2 and 3. So really? he did oh, all of them. Wow, all right. Also did Lean on Me. Huh. The Morgan Freeman movie. Yeah. And then to wrap up the weirdness of his filmography he did eight seconds with luke perry <laughs> oh my god the 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 uh bullfight or yeah. the bull riding, bull riding yeah, yeah 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 oh my god like what a just all over the place yeah and yeah. i guess there's a sports theme to most of them rocky being this this being one and, yeah kind of the underdog and, does good kind sure, of a yeah. theme Which, well you know i mean i'm sure he lives in a very nice place in doing in doing <laughs> research for this one of the things i thought was so funny is how everybody and talking about it all these years later was like, why was it called the karate kid? Like that everybody was like, this is some 1970s like grindhouse style title where it's going to be the most for, like forgotten movie ever. Yeah. And you know, and, and the, it had heart. Yeah. Well, and the director and the writer the whole time were like, no man, this is going to be a classic. For sure. And of course it ended up being that. But I think at the time, you know, I went down this whole rabbit hole about uh, the writer, Robert Mark Kamen uh -huh. uh, and how this is really so much of it's this like his is, story right? is, yeah, it's based on his own life. Yeah. Like as a kid, he was he was Danielson. He got yeah. beat up. He had to go and learn karate, and like he learned it from this guy who apparently was doing this new kind of uh, defense oriented, not strike first uh, kind of karate. And mm -hmm. at first, he went to basically a kind of Cobra Kai kind of place. Yeah, with this guy that he ended up making into the main Cobra Kai uh, sensei that was like, strike first, show your, you know, and no mercy, no mercy yeah. and all that. And that he went to this guy whose name actually was Miyagi. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, Ralph Macchio is great. You know, he was outsiders, I yeah. think at this point. And, um, but on, the Miyagi character so important, obviously. And, right. and they cast the perfect person to do it in Pat Morita. Which at the time, nobody thought was the right person because he was known as Arnold from Happy Days. Uh -huh, and like, right. you know, and 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 Pat Morita was this uh, real sub subversive uh, stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. And so like no one saw him as being this like centered, like, you know, basically borderline mystical kind of character mm -hmm. as this like quiet it definitely has mystical qualities but 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 as this sort of quiet you know kind of standoffish in the beginning uh very very um taciturn character like people were like why would you ever cast pat morita as that character i, I mean yeah it's it's a uh, obviously a classic character in movie history and then you you know like you said earlier he's making the underdog story but this is a kid's version right this is a kid's version of rocky right right um, right and so it's so easy to relate to and it had heart like that's the important thing with all these stories even something as like seemingly stupid as a movie with hugh jackman called real steel have you seen this one <laughs> oh, yeah I've seen, I've seen real steel it's yeah. an actually pretty good movie it is a good and, movie and I so like you're, it. You're, it, but it, it's because you, they have those relatable characters and that have that underdog story right yeah. and everyone can get behind that i i always love rooting for underdogs who doesn't well and i think who's that, like no the kingmakers should yeah win. yeah they should be the ones <laughs> the guys who are really horrible well and i think also the fact that you had uh, Ralph Macchio playing this character where they're from the East Coast, they move out West, and that yeah. he's this fish he's out of water. Jersey anyway, guy. He's a Jersey guy. And like <laughs> the way he talks and the way he handles himself, and then the way that that um, is put up against the Miyagi character, where he is very quiet and, and really not just an outcast uh, as this kind of older guy 
who again is 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 very kind of gruff and like sticks to his uh sticks to his ways but also like all of these little bits where it's like oh we're going to talk about uh, the internment camps, and we're going to talk about how he was in World War II, and that, and that you know, he lost his wife early, and that he's has a drinking problem, and like all these little bits start to unfold themselves, but at the same time, we're with Danielson, and so we're we're really in his view of like who is this old guy he said he was going to teach me karate but all i've been doing is doing you know fucking jobs at his exactly house. and that leads us to our scene that we're reviewing yeah. today we're doing calling it the sand the floor scene yeah uh, and basically you know? there's like four yeah little, little scenes that that pepper along the build up to this culminating scene well, we're and talking I, about. you know just to give a little context uh you know before this scene we like you mentioned we see miyagi kind of giving him multiple chores throughout the movie with basically like no questions. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. And, you and want me to teach you karate? Paint, you paint do the not fence, ask sand me. the floor, wax on, wax off, all the stuff that has become kind of famous. But he shows up in the morning and there's just paint buckets and a note saying paint the house, right? Yep. And, and so this scene begins with him showing up with the fishing rod saying you missed his spot. Yeah. Like, and this is after he's <laughs> had him clean and wax all of his cars. And the, actually, the, the, the car scene is so important because yeah. I love it's, it, it's, Burned into my brain the way that Yoda saying do or do not, there is no try is, where basically Miyagi tells, because he says, are you ready to start? And he's like, I guess so. And he's like, you walk on this side of the road, you're okay. You walk on this side of the road, you're okay. You walk in the middle, you get squished. Squished like grape. And he's like, karate, same way. You do it, great. You don't do it, great. You go, "Ah, I guess... Squish like great. Mm-hmm. That's where he's like, do not ask me any questions. And so after that, we just see Daniel going and like, he is like, paint okay, I guess I got to paint yeah. the So fence. he's listening, but at this point he's pissed, right? And then yeah. he says, you miss his spot. That really sets Oh my off. God, yes. And, um, you know, uh, but this, you know, really becomes the learning moment scene in the movie, right? Um, and we've peppered these jobs throughout earlier, but this is kind of the culminating part. And, and he claims that he's just his slave, and he's like, you've learned plenty. Yeah. You know, uh, but he calls him bullshit, his arm hurts, and ni- this is where the mystic... Yeah, the... Uh, yeah, the mystic uh, Miyagi comes out, yes, right? We get yeah. to see the power of Miyagi with this yes. the hand swipe. And obviously that happens later in the movie as well, in a very important part. But here yes. we kind of get a... a di- I've never really understood it. It's kind of stupid, but no, like, it, like literally, his hand just from rubbing together, he touches me. He's like, he's like, ow, and I'm like, what's he doing? <laughs> but he's like, oh my god, it's better. Yeah. Which again is just like, it's that '80s magical kind of like, okay, let but it, it go. Was huge for like watching that as a kid. And yeah, like, well, oh, yeah, it's perfect. And, and and I also think you have to kind of like you have to give it grace of being a movie this old that like. Yeah. Yes, there was. I mean, I read some really interesting interviews with Pat Morita's daughter and that she was like, yeah, you know, he was concerned on one end about the tokenism of an Asian American playing this kind Mm. of mystical kind of character. Yeah. And she was like, but he was also like, I got to do it because I have the opportunity to actually like talk about the internment camps and, and, and show that there is like these cultural touchstones that don't have to do with being assimilated to become perfectly American, that those, that those pieces of our culture, uh, as, as immigrants to this other country are important and, and have something to say. And so like, while there's a part of me that's like, yeah, you know, the, the mystical person from another culture Mm -hmm. thing, it's a little rough, like all these years later to see that, but the, the trade off of being able to say, well, I think the trade off of being able to say, I'm not just, I don't just have a bit part doing a bad, you know, Mickey Rooney and Breakfast at Tiffany's, like, kind of a... Oh, man, awful. Yeah, Um, but but to actually be able to show that this culture has respect and the way that he does it of, like, always looking, always looking eyes. Oh, I say it it all the time. Look eye. Look eye. Always look look eye. (laughs) It's really cool. Like, it's it it does have this respect and dignity to it that I think had not existed before that, so... I think some of that mysticism is a little forgivable all these years later. Yeah, for sure. And he's the hero. Like, yeah, I totally. Mean, I mean, Daniel's the hero, but it's really Miyagi. Yeah, like yeah. let's be honest. I know it's the karate kid, not the karate teacher, but, but it's his story. Yeah, absolutely. It really is. And um, you know, like he, 
I, I love the moments where he's like, show me sand on the floor, and he like gets down on his knees, and he's like, no, no. no. <laughs> and you go, hi, 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 Yeah. It's just kind of a, just a funny thing. And that's the other thing. Pat Morita's super funny. He so, really is, yeah. So when he, he wants this, to be an like, asshole, he can be an asshole. But guess he what? He holds it back, Usually yeah. the smartest people are in the room are the quiet ones in the corner. Yep. And when they speak... That's they actually have something smart to say. Totally right. Yeah, and uh, you're right. Even and that from is... the first scene when he's like, you know, calling out his black eye. Yeah, when he's fixing their faucet yep. at, at the beginning, and, and you know, you just it's just like the Silent Bob, you know, moment, right? Yeah, like when they speak, <laughs> yeah. boom, it's going to be the exactly. science. And so you yeah. know, you know that, but the the wise, quiet character almost always works. Totally, right? totally, and um. Yeah, just having him be funny is the just the cherry on top of everything. Yeah. Um, and is this not one of like the best student teacher scenes in the movie history? Like Well, it's so much I mean, there's I think that there we get so much of just Ralph Macchio is so good at just without saying anything, seeing the way his eyes track over yeah. Pat Morita, seeing the way that he's gleaning information and, and as a kid there's all these pieces of it you know when 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 later again there's this really tender scene where uh uh, uh miyagi's drunk mm -hmm. and he has the photo of his wife and it's like ralph macchio as this kid who's playing a 16 year old who knows nothing about who this. knows nothing about any of this like his the, best the, friend's an old asian guy yeah and just like <laughs> the history of it and then like how to have grace with this person and realize mm -hmm that he's really lonely and that he needs a friend. Like it's so loaded without them ever saying anything yeah. about it. They don't need to have any character, like have this big understanding. It's just in his eyes. It's in his Abs reactions. Absolutely. I mean, then that's acting. You're describing acting. Right? Yeah. Like, so, so, but the, you know, like there's, once they start doing this kind of sparring, yeah. Um, it becomes something clicks right yeah. to him. Yep. And he kind of realizes like, Oh, wait, everything I've been doing is a defensive move against the other person. Yep. And they, they, you know, they almost dance and, you know, do this whole thing. And it's well, incredible. and I think it's really important. You, you know, you talk yeah. about you talk about um, uh, uh, Pat Morita's performance of being so held back. And again, knowing that the actor himself was a stand up comedian, was a comedic actor, like was known for like having a lot of great one liners and zingers and all this stuff mm -hmm. for him to, to hold all of that back means that when he spoke as to your point, like we get the was, payoff in a scene, like we this. get a payoff in a scene <laughs> like this. But then the second piece of that also is that the movie posits that he is this amazing martial arts expert. <laughs> and we have this one scene, you know, and obviously it's not Pat Morita, it's his stunt double who was a a, a martial arts expert that uh, we see him almost in this like Batman-esque, like in the shadows, kick all of Cobra Kai's ass, <laughs> right, right? Uh, on Halloween night. Like he just rallies on these dudes and that's where, you know, they start to talk about like, well, can you teach me? And then after that, all we see is is Miyagi being this little bumbling, like quiet, like, mom, I'm going to go fishing, like paint my fence, like kind of guy. And then in this scene, when he, he lets out He's that, no emotion, when he lets yeah. out that, Kya! Kya! and like starts attacking him and he's able to fend it off. It is so enthralling in that moment where you're like, Oh, he's been holding this all back that he is this expert. And there I, is something so incredible about that. I, I was just going to say the same. I love moments in movies like that. It's just so satisfying, right? It's the payoff, yep. right? And everyone loves a payoff, just like they love rooting for an underdog. Yep. The other thing I would say that's really interesting as far as the direction in this scene goes is that the, most of this movie really plays it very straight in terms of like, here is your swell to let you know how you're mm -hmm. supposed to feel. There's no music in this scene. You That's just right. hear the crickets in the background and they're just standing the in his backyard. <laughs> and and yeah, you can hear like the little bit of water from the, 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 the waterfall, yeah. The waterfall in the pond. And there's no other music, and it's just the sound of him talking. And then when he starts attacking him, he gets three or four of those big kia sounds. Yeah. And then it's just the <laughs> of yeah. them actually sparring. And it's so effective, but it's also like, I don't know. To me, I like watching that scene again, I was like that's so interesting because it seems so out of place where all the rest of this is this popcorn style coming of age, like 80s movie 
and then there's that scene just lodged in the middle of it that feels like really intense yeah. where it's like no, it's a great scene oh it's, you're it, learning again, it's, karate it's the payoff <laughs> scene it's the learning moment scene you know after this we get the getting better montage yeah, da, 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 where, da, yeah, where, where you yeah. know the crane kick and all that stuff yeah, comes yeah, in yeah. and all that stuff but this is really this is probably the most pivotal point in the movie right yep. where things change daniel son realizes what's happening yep. that he's been He's been getting taught this whole time. Yep, yep, yep. And, and this idea of trust the process, right? Like yeah, now I have exactly. full faith in you, and I, I'm not going to call bullshit on you exactly. ever again. I get it. I, I get it. you. You did. You tricked me. Yep. And I have respect that. <laughs> and you, you did get me to paint your fence and wax <laughs> oh, all yeah. your cars his and pro- paint his, your house. His property value went up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, both that house, things are that true. house nowadays yeah. has got to be worth a million, two million in California. Well, Absolutely. and I think again, you know, going back to this kind of like a mystical outsider aspect, it's like that is another funny part is that it's like, no, I did teach you karate, but I also got this this dumb white kid to fucking <laughs> do all this work on my house before I would teach him how to beat up the bullies. So I'm like, yeah, that's also a good little like. Dumb- you know, I was questioning if we should do this scene when we were talking about it because there's a lot of other scenes we could do. You could do the end of the movie easily yeah. or. Or whatever, and uh, you know, stuff with Ali, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. But like, man, good choice. We we it, chose the right one. It's just such I love a... this movie. Oh yeah. Did you ever watch the Cobra Kai the show? I've watched a little <laughs> bit of it, and so, it's a pretty great. Uh, if you're gonna go back and relitigate this movie, yes. looking at it in modern day, like thank God that Johnny, uh, 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 it's, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the character Johnny, mm-hmm. like, kind of got his. Uh, his due. Yeah. Cause there is, you know, I think for years before the show was around, I mean, if, if we ever want to do uh top five TV shows or movie reboots that were built on the mythos of the internet, <laughs> I feel like that this was probably a cracked article of like why Danielson's actually the bully and karate <laughs> yeah. kid. And that's where the idea yeah, for the Zach inception Morris came from. Yeah. yeah. Like I, which I love, <laughs> look, I'm all about that. Like oh, yeah, I, I, sure. I'm, I'm here for that, but um, no, that's, that's great. And in, in the show itself, like I, I definitely got wrapped up into it mostly because of my, my nostalgia, but like that's what they're playing off of is your nostalgia. And I, I kind of coined it as cheesy charm because, totally. because it's, it's pretty cheesy. It's like, it's a teen show. Like right. it's not necessarily made for guys like us, yeah. right? But we have that nostalgia that we can connect it. Plus they have the three movies to cut into mm-hmm. and you know, relate all these characters back and everything. So they did a good job and it kept me hooked for a few seasons. After a while, I was just like, all right. I, I don't care I, anymore. I, 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 yeah, I got my, I got what I needed <laughs> yeah. out of this. No, but it is just such a, <laughs> it, it it really is a staple of its, of its time. Yeah. But also there is a timeless quality to, um, you know, and like, yeah, people were saying like, oh, it's Rocky for kids because you have like, you know, the, the the kid who, no no one can tell me nothing. And then you got, like, the old wizened, you know, character who's coming in and, and saying, here's how you're going to be the best at this. Um, but, yeah. like, it still is just, like... It is, which is so why you, you keep getting bastardized versions of it, right? You know, I mean, they did the next crowded kid right. with Hillary Swink, even the one with uh, Will, son, uh, Will Smith's son. Yeah, and... Um, uh, which uh, is, and Jackie Chan Jackie plays Chan, Miyagi. yeah. Uh, did and you? I don't even think they do karate. I think it's kung fu. In the movie. Do they do a a wax on, wax off in that movie? A version of it. Okay. I put my jacket on a thousand times. I took it off a thousand times. Okay? This is stupid. I'm done. They can beat me up if they want to. That's the only part that the writer said was not real. He's like, I didn't have any. He's like... But that I, became so iconic. Well, I think it also is like, what's more interesting to show a character just being trained how to do a thing? Exactly. Or, or is it more interesting? I mean, mm-hmm. you, th- you think of something like Kill Bill, where it's like all of the training that that uh, Beatrix Kiddo goes through mm-hmm. when she goes up to the mountaintop and meets the master and all that mm-hmm. is... Yeah, it's the little, you know, it yeah. still are these things that are like inside the coffin. They're not fun. Off. They're not they're not uh sexy. They're hard and they're mean and your your master doesn't like you, right? It's like it's these tropes that I think this movie was able to synthesize and do in a kid-friendly way that just like, yeah, for for guys like you and I as as children it was like you got to paint the fence first you paint the fence yeah we didn't and then you know karate yeah we didn't have youtube to look up how to do karate no (laughs) well and and what it meant was is it was it gave you this lesson in life of Mm -hmm. like 
go do the hard thing. And somewhere mixed in the hard thing is the actual lesson that gets you to the place that you want to go. And so like, I'm, I'm easily uh, one of yeah. my favorite sports movies though. Love Karate Kid. God, see, and I would never even think of it as a sports movie. Oh, but it, you're totally it totally is. <laughs> I guess I do like sports movies. <laughs> oh, see, he tricked yeah. you too. Oh my god! All right. Uh, next week we are going to begin. Oh, we're actually doing a punishment. Holy review next shit! Week. We're doing a punishment. I, I forgot about that. I, we, we're going to begin a festival after the punishment review. We're going to do Master of Disguise. Oh, we've decided uh, to Dana make Carby. us watch. We've decided to make ourselves watch Master of Disguise. Yeah, it'll be fun. I I'm am excited. Really interested to see what this movie is all about. Yes. So please like and subscribe. I don't think I've ever actually seen it. Me either. Yeah. 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 I so, uh, can't wait. Uh, all right, please like and subscribe. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm just thinking of the little stupid turtle. Oh, head. the turtle. I, that's exactly what just went through sorry. my head. Anyways, please like and subscribe. Follow us along on this journey. We'd love to have you. Yes. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Hit the bell icon. Give us five stars. Do all the things to yes. help us. It really helps. And we will see you next week. Bye, you guys. See you.